This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, this is the fifth and final lecture on Chapter 24 of the Paper F2 Free Lecture Notes on Variance Analysis. And I hope you've listened to the previous ones, because all the previous ones, we're looking at the example on absorption costing. This time, what's the effect of marginal costing? And as I said, this will be short because there's very little difference from what we've done. All the variances are exactly the same as for absorption costing. So I'm not going to waste time going through them all again, except for two. And the two are the sales volume variants. And the fixed overhead variances. All oh, is the same because you know if you spend more money on materials, you make less profit. It doesn't matter which costing system you're using. If you spend more money on labour, you make less profit. It doesn't matter which costing system you're using. So all the other variances are exactly the same, and I've been through the rules, and you must learn them. These two change, and I think they're both easy to remember. So let me explain. And. Um, Sorry, let me do them and explain why at the same time. First of all, sales volume variance. Sales volume variance is the effect of selling more or less units. If you sell more units, you expect more profit. And so just as before, you compare the actual sales which were 8,400, uh, with the budget sales, which were 8,000. Well, with absorption costing, we cost it out at standard profit per unit. But profit per unit included this absorption of fixed overheads. If it's marginal costing, I'm afraid if you need, you'll have to look back at the earlier lectures on marginal costing. But with marginal costing, um, we don't value the units at uh, full cost. We don't include the fixed overheads. We cost it, if it's marginal costing, at standard contribution per unit. And what is the standard contribution here? Remember the selling price, standard selling price is 75. Uh, the standard cost, if it's marginal costing, it's only the variable costs, which are materials of 18, labour of 25, variable overheads of 10. And so the marginal cost, 18 plus 25 plus 10, is 53. Selling price, 75. And so $22 per unit. And so the sales volume variance, if we're using marginal costing, will be 8,800. Uh, here it's favourable, we sell more units. So, I don't think a lot to remember there. It's the same workings, but with absorption costing, it's standard profit per unit. With marginal costing, it's standard contribution per unit. All right, so that's the uh, first change, the sales volume variance. The second and the only other change is the fixed overhead variance.
And if you remember, with two when it was absorption costing, we got an expenditure variance, which was logical. If we spent more than we budgeted, fine, you lost money. But we also had this volume variance, and that occurred because we'd been absorbing. Well, with marginal costing, we're not absorbing fixed overheads. There's no volume variance. The only fixed overhead variance is the expenditure variance. And it's calculated in exactly the same way as before, the difference between the actual total, the actual total fixed overheads are 134074, and the budget total. If you look back for this question, uh, you'll find the budget total was 130,500, and therefore, with an adverse variance of 3574. So the expenditure variance is always the same, whether it's marginal or absorption. Uh, the difference is that you know volume variance. And there we are. The only two differences the sales volume variance and the fixed overhead uh, variance. So that's a lot. I warned you in advance, uh, there's a lot there and you've got to learn the rules. There's no easy way around it. Now, the more you see the logic, certainly on the, um, the first three cost variances, then I think the easier it is. I think it's dangerous purely to learn rules without any understanding at all. So only you know how much you need to go back through the lectures. And obviously you must practice. Because I did say before, there's bound to be a substantial part of the exam always testing you purely on variances. <laughs>